Hey everyone, Rob here, and there's actually something totally strange that I found in Iceland over the last little while that you may not have known about, and it's definitely linked to all of the rising inflation that we are experiencing around the world. And this is called indexed loans or indexed mortgages. Now you can see here, here's a chart from you know the central bank or, or the sort of the, the Bank of Iceland, and it's showing the inflation rates currently. We can see it right now, we're getting a little bit of a dip. Uh, down at the very end and you can see back in 2007 2008 2009 it was a huge amount of inflation in iceland so why is this important and i was actually looking at some of the bank rates for buying a house or buying a mortgage i know a lot of people are interested in moving to iceland and sort of want to take a look i was looking here and we can see here this is eastland's monkey so it's one of the three main banks in iceland and although this is in Icelandic, I'll walk you through it. Say we want to buy a house. So it's our first purchase. The purchase price, let's just say, is, um, I don't know, 50 million. Uh, and for those of you wondering, we'll just put this into here. So it's 50 million Icelandic kroner. So it's about 345, 346,000 US dollars. And then if we look at the euro, it's around yeah around the same thing 356 thousand euros so that's the price of the house that we're looking for uh this fast thing about that is what the house value is according to the government so let's just put something like you know 42 million it's it's always going to be less than the purchase price as anyone will probably know and then of course the amount that you have as a deposit and now it's saying here that we need at least 7.5 million icelandic kroner so we'll just put the minimum because we want to buy a house and buying a house is quite expensive these days if we calculate this give it a second to process all of that uh, we can see the monthly payments here it's 240,000 icelandic uh, and let's just use the us dollar so 240,000 so we're looking at about 1700 bucks uh, for the mortgage payment on this blended loan we have 300,000 Icelandic and then 179,000 now why would we not obviously go for this 179,000 Icelandic kroner I mean if we're going back to here 179,000 we're looking at we get a house and we only pay 1200 bucks a month for this this house which is worth you know 350,000 dollars or so but these words here, let's just do a quick translation so you can see. So we have mixed loan, unsecured loan, which is basically not tied to inflation, or whatever. And then the secured loan is tied to the inflation. So that's an indexed loan. Now, why is this so dangerous? Because we're looking at these monthly payments and it's just like, this is an obvious thing to do. The key is, is this middle number here. Now on the very left, we have the interest rates. So we can see uh, this unsecured loan, which would be your typical fixed or variable interest rate loans. We got that's 7.4% interest rate. If we open that up, we can see the loan is split into a couple different things. We got uh, 7.4 and then we have a second loan, which is 8.5 and then 8.85 for this first purchase small loan. So it's, it's quite complicated, but it's all very, and if we switch back over here, we got these variable rates that are available, we can switch it to fixed for three years, which is eight point whatever percent and fixed for five years. So your standard mortgage that everyone in North America especially would know is, is this sort of style and the interest rate here is very high. So if we go back again and we look at this middle, this middle row, we can see total cost of loan, right? The typical fixed and variable rate, the total cost of loan is 133 million Icelandic kroner. So again, I'm going to switch back to Icelandic for a second. We're paying just over double, you know, getting close to three times the purchase price. Remember, we have a loan of, well, it's three times. So it's a loan of 42 million and we're paying back 133. If we take an <laughs> indexed loan, and again, I'm just going to read this off of their website. An index and non index loan. So paying off traditional non index loan is very simple. You pay part of the remaining principal as well as the interest, which is what we would see in the typical variable and fixed rates. As you pay the remainder of the loan, decreases. Index loans, however, so that's this last one here, vastly different and more complicated. And each month you pay your regular payment of the remaining principal and your interest. But as monthly inflation numbers are published, the increase in the CPI, the consumer price index, 
is added to every payment remaining of your loan. As this addition to the remainder of the loan, it can possibly outweigh the payments you are making, and there is a chance that despite paying down the loan, that the remainder of the total loan will increase, which means that the, the amount that you owe, even though you're taking out a loan of 42 million Icelandic kroner, it may be that you actually owe back 52 million Icelandic kroner. So let's take a look. This is where I want to dive into really quick. If we open up this, we can see that we're taking out a loan of 42 million and eventually after everything, we're paying back 763 million Icelandic. So again, US dollars is about 350,000 and if we take 763 million and type that in, we're looking at out of a loan of 350,000 US, we are going to pay back 5.2 million dollars if you take out this loan. Now, how does that look with your monthly payments? Because right now it's like how can this even work because it's 40 years of paying you know, 179,000 Icelandic. So that was what, 1,200 or 1,300 US dollars a month? How does this even work out if our monthly payment is so low? Let's dive into that. We can see here in this chart, the payments start very, very low. And we can see 178, but every month it's increasing to the point that at the end of the sort of loan period, you are now paying five million to six million Icelandic kroner per month. And what that means is you need to pay four hundred and or sorry forty one thousand US dollars every single month to be able to afford your mortgage. You can see the payment on the very far right hand side here is ever increasing. So although these loans look very attractive, they are absolutely terrible to take very quickly these payments are getting into these ridiculous amounts of money we got two million icelandic you know going all the way up to six million it is definitely a loan that i think should be illegal and it is definitely geared towards those that perhaps do not make much money and they want a house and they look at this monthly payment and they think i can't afford two hundred and forty thousand icelandic i definitely can't afford three hundred thousand I can afford 179. Again, interest rates low, but you have to remember in cases of inflation, it's adding to it and you are paying back huge numbers. This top one here, blended loan, it's kind of a mix between the two uh, where you have one that's linked to inflation and then one that is regular, which is why you're still paying back a huge amount of money. Not quite as high as if you just went to the index loan. So I would recommend, and I'm not a financial advisor at all, you know, it's just sort of in my mind, common sense, if you can afford it, definitely take out the traditional variable or fixed interest rate loans. Now you are paying higher percentages, but you're not paying at the end of the day a huge amount to live somewhere. It's just common sense in my mind. I don't think a lot of people knew about this. It's uh, just something. And if you're wondering if it's just this one bank, we'll just go to another one really quick. Just put in the same thing, say purchase price is 50, 50 million, the market value. We get, we're putting in the same numbers that we saw in the other one, and then we'll just say we had like what, 7.5 million. And we'll just look. The same thing applies for all of these banks, where you can see here the price of the loan goes all the way up and then drops down afterwards as you're making payments as compared to some of these other loans. So, end of the day. Something that you may not have known about Iceland, definitely pretty crazy. And again, it's all based on this inflation number. So oh, I thought it was interesting uh, to sort of point out. So anyway, I hope you found it interesting. I didn't know if you knew about this type of loan in Iceland. I just thought it was crazy to even see that you would pay back <laughs> on a, on a $350,000 US dollar house. You're ending up paying like millions back at the end of the day, which is astonishingly crazy. So that's it. I just thought it was funny. A little bit off topic, but there we have it.